food in the back of your that you will live there. Okay? So <laughs> Okay, the 
will be your your procedure tells you when you have acid. I think both of the kitchen and me are gonna have acid. So wear your awful clothes. So if you get some on you, you have cold in your clothes, it's okay. Alright? Indicator for any point is force of denunciation. If the reaction requires acid, like I said, a lot of these reactions are in acidic medium, so we will put acid in. When all the Fe plus 2 converts to Fe plus 3 by cerium, the color will change from red to a clear light blue color. Okay? This is what happens. You have this, this orthofinanceline with the Fe in it is a red, orange, reddish color. Okay? When the cerium reduces, uh, oxidizes the Fe plus 2 to plus 3, the, the phenanthamine releases that Fe because it only binds to the Fe plus 2. When it releases it, the phenanthamine itself is, is kind of a clear color, but you see a light blue. Right? You follow me so far? If you're not, just read before you come here and then read again before you start the lab. Okay. So, the experiment summary, this experiment not only tests your titration skill, it tests your ability to multi-process. So, what do you mean? So, you're going to do the cooking with your unknown sample with aluminum. I'll show you what the setup looks like. When you're done with one, you can start cooking the other, otherwise you won't have enough time. So, there's cooling time, etc. Okay, so... First thing you go in the lab, before you go in the lab, make a list of what you need to check out. You have to check out a lot of stuff, okay? So, where to start? There are two places you can start because some of you will be weighing, some of you can be preparing their unknown solution so that we don't have a backup in the balance sheet. Are you following me so far? You can split it, it doesn't matter which part you start first. Are you following me? I hope that. The, the, the receiver is open on your ears, okay? So, so, you can start one by pipetting five samples of unknown with a 5 ml pipette. That's one of the things you can probably be checking out. And you remember, anytime you have an unknown, any solution, you're going to find concentration, and you have to rinse all your pipettes, etc., 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 right? All right? So, you are going to get five samples because once you pre rinse your pipette, if, if you put five samples, it's going to be enough time to just go check out the cube. Just turn it at the end of the lab, put in the five samples so that if you need to, if your titration went awful, you have spare samples. You don't have to re rinse the pipette again. You're just being efficient. Following me, even though we probably need three or four good runs, you put in an extra just so you don't have to rinse it. Okay? So you're going to add 50 ml of water, that's in your procedure, and 4 ml of 3 molar sulfuric. The 3 molar sulfuric acid, I have told people not reading the label on the sulfuric acid, it's the one that says C-I-L, not C-O-N. You know the difference between C-I-L? What, what does C-I-L stand for? Dilute. I've had students throwing in the cons, okay? Wake up before you... <coughs> You take any reagent model, okay? So, then you're gonna add aluminum spiral to a gentle board. So, you, one of the things you'll be checking out is this, this aluminum as a wire. You're gonna coil it, and then you're gonna put it in the solution. This is your solution. So, my drawing is very bad. But, you're gonna put a crucible, you guys know, a porcelain crucible on top. Okay, to, to wedge the coil, you're gonna put a loop on this coil so it doesn't fall in because you wanna fish it out after you're done cooking. You got it? Okay, I'll do have this drawing again on the board for you if you forgot, okay? So your solution will contain your five mil of unknown sample, uh, 50 mil water, and four mils of uh, three molar. And then you're just gonna cook it. I said put the wire goes, put the ring stand, put the wire goes underneath, and do a gentle boil for 30 minutes. Okay? When you're boiling, if some of the water goes away, you can shoot some DI water from your wash bottle. Because if you let that go to dry dryness, the whole lab will be coughing up a storm. Because it's 
so it's okay to shoot more because you're titrating against the number of moles of Fe in there. You following me? Okay? So the other start that you can do, if you, if you can start this, or if the balance is free, you can do this part, okay? You're gonna prepare 100 ml of 0.04 molar ammonium stearium nitrate. This is a good primary standard, so wait for that. But before you do that, pre-lab is required for you. Calculate for the molecular weight, and you know you guys got Google, right? Find a good source of it. You don't want to calculate the truth, right? You need to calculate molar mass, right? And the mass needed, knowing this, can you find how many moles that you're requiring? Can you find the number of grams you need to weigh? Have it run it by the number by, with your teacher in the lab so that you're not if your calculation pop, we can spot immediately your calculation is wrong, you don't weigh that mass. Okay? If in the ballpark it's 0.04 molar, we only give you two, one quick tip there. But when you calculate it for your calculation, you need it to the number of sixes that is required. You following me? Just like your oxalic acid. Okay. So Look at the procedure, okay? So it's on your, I think it's page 53 of your manual that this is where the pre lab requires you, but I have an old manual, so it might be off a few pages. So after you've done the cooking, I'm going back to start one, okay? So those are the two first start that you can start. After you've done the cooking, you can cool it. While cooling, you can start preparing the next one. Add 5 ml of 3 molar sulfuric, 1 to 2 drops of indicator, okay? And then you're going to titrate with the serum salt. So, where does the serum go? On your duress. So, that means your duress needs some rinsing as well with the serum titrant, right? Okay. Should all samples use the same volume of titrant, you think? Just like your unknown.
that in the, the beginning of the worksheet data sheet. Only in the bottom do you use the 5ML. She put this in the data sheet to remind you that it was what you typed in, what 5ML was the standard. So worry about it, the user calculation account. Then in the last row, it will say milligram of SP in 5ML. That's when you use this milligram and divide it by 5ML. That's your concentration per ml. You following me? Okay. So, if you have extra time, think about how to approach experiment 23. <laughs> Get the report sheet for experiment 19. Actually, you also have the kinetics. The kinetics lab, if you have not finished working on it, use that extra time to ask the teacher if you're lost. There are problems in the back as well. The graphing of that experiment 17 is very important. Scaling and everything. You're allowed to Excel to do the Excel. However, remember data points always have to be displayed, right? You have to show your data points. So you have to have a line with no data points shown. You use of the graph, you have you have that graphing guide even